Well, everybody, welcome to uh, another episode of Living on Music. I'm Steve Hauck. And you know what? Um, this is a gentleman that I wanted on this show for a, a, a while. But you know what? Here's a busy guy, uh, a, a real gig master. He really plays a lot live. Um, he's a sweet, kind, and friendly man um, who is oh so talented. Uh, he's looking around for that guy uh, as, as a piece of what he was. And well, we'll talk about this, but you can go back a few decades when he was 16 years old, popular band asked him to fill a vacancy and the other band members were older and they were touring around and they would rush him home just in time to be dropped up, dropped up at the school bus stop. Now, I love that story. We'll hear a little bit more from this gentleman about that. It's kind of Bob Weir-esque, which they did with Bobby at the beginning with the dead because he was younger than most of them and the parents were like, do you want to be in the band? But it, it, that's where it kind of began with that band for this special guest. Um, this man has had a pleasure of sharing the stage with some of my favorite people and bands on earth, Marshall Tucker, Ben, the Outlaws and Molly Hatchett, Southern Rock fan. Robin Trower, who I've interviewed and was one of the great moments I've ever had, but one of my favorites. And you could go on for a long time. And we'll talk about more like Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush, which I know this guy loves. Living Color, Blue Oyster Cult. There's a lot of bands. Also some stuff with Craig Fuller and Bill Payne, who I interviewed of Little Feet. Um, he's also played with a plethora of local DC musicians. And that's going to be fun to talk about because I, they've had a lot on the show. And I know a lot about them, but I want to hear more about what it's like to collaborate as this man often does um at this moment releasing singles um and we're going to play one early in the show that is really exciting um and you'll hear of a chunk of it was just released and there are a few more almost ready this is a busy man in music right now and it's love having him on ladies and gentlemen gary smallwood welcome thanks steve appreciate it Good to Hi, see viewers. you. Oh, yeah, it's great to see you, man. Um, see I'm you. really happy. We crossed paths, obviously, at the Cancer Can Rock event, which was yep. uh, a month or so ago, and I'm sure we will again at one of those. And it's going to be, um, it's going to be another uh, wonderful experience to be out and playing and things like that. You uh, are your your gig list is wonderfully full. And I, I, I love, I love seeing that right now, especially with musicians breaking back out. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got through the last two years. You and I haven't really talked about that, um, at the gigs, uh, so busy and then you'd leave for another gig, <laughs> <Those Right. gigs. laughs> but how, how are you feeling, uh, after two years of kind of being a little bit, um, put, put down? All I can say, it's been a blessing. Um, everything is almost back to normal. Um, getting close. Right. Uh, 2020, um, March the 15th was my last live gig until halfway through 2021, I think. Right. I did a couple of virtuals there, which was kind of cool, but just not the same, you know? Yes. Right. But it has picked back up, which is very nice. Yeah, it really has. And, um, you know, we're going to show a couple of things that have happened over the last year or two, which I loved. Um, what I'd like to do, though, it's let's, let's hit it right off the top, Gary. Uh, let's talk about Harder Going Down and some of this new music. You and I chatted about it briefly in the whirling moment of the Cancer Can Rock event. Right. Um, and uh, talk, talk a little bit about where this new music has come from. Has it come out of you of the last year or two? Has it come after, uh, been, a, been a, a long time coming? It's been kind of a weird uh, trip. Um, when I was growing up, um, I was heavily influenced by I Call the Big Two, which is Clapton and Hendrix are both my heroes. So. Yeah, so I was a guitar guy, never sang, didn't write anything, just played, you know, Oof, yes. played in different bands. Now, right. lately, I started full time singing and playing in 1992. Great. Um, singing has come a little ways better, I think. Uh, I never really sang in, in bands other than backups, you know. Right. But now, you know, that I had to do full time, it's like, oh, dude, you got to sing now. I'm like, oh really right. <laughs> so but the writing i mean i was writing uh like a lot of blues blues rock kind of stuff right um and then i got into uh you know i've always liked the 
alt country thing. I'm all I like grew up on country and then sure. the rock thing and right. it all kind of mixes together. Sure. So the new stuff is kind of a I don't know, a melting pot of that stuff. I mean, harder going down is basically people have told me it sounds kind of countryish, which Right. I don't think it sounds kind of country, but that's just me. I like think it sounds kind of, um, I don't know, like eagle-ish or yeah. I should say. Yeah, I, I would I would go along with that with that style. Um, you, who was playing um, with you on this song? Uh, me, myself and I. Oh, that's fantastic. I did, I did everything. <laughs> well, that is even more of a wonderful thing to talk about. That's something to be ha- proud of. Let's kick things off with Gary Smallwood of what's going on right now. This is a... Uh, a uh, j- just released when did this bounce out into the world uh, about three weeks ago all right cool well we're on, on the cusp of the release yes. of uh, a new song from gary smallwood here's a little bit of harder going down Yeah, that's, you know, Gary, that's great. It sounds wonderful. You, I mean, you, you got to feel, you know, happy to get some of this new music out right now. I really am. Good. I've got a great writing partner too, so. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's fantastic. We'll talk about, more, more about that person uh, at some point here. Mm-hmm. Um, you had, uh, in 2021, there was another original song you did live, and it's a wonderful video captured at Leesburg Concert on the Green, which is something that's been, kind of a staple of this this time of year right out there right. Uh, it's, it's been something have you played there often i did the first 15 years of it oh of acoustic on the green yes yeah maybe you did one or two yeah i was there every year until i, thought so. I, I didn't do it this year but uh oh that but, uh, well, yeah that's great, great gig that's fantastic well this is from august uh around now uh, a year ago now um it's an original original song co-written by you and your lady. And yes. it's, yes, and that's what's wonderful too about just showing a wonderful snippet of this. This is from Leesburg Concert on the Green, you guys. And this is a little bit of No Superman. Sometimes 
say you stand for something want to change the world end up doing nothing watching as it burns got a front seat on a dang street just enough to keep from jumping out Got a free ride On the wrong side Let my dreams slide So we won't go without Oh, I'm no Superman I got no moves Can't save the day Well, I do What I can Hope my superpowers On the way Can't see the bigger picture Staring at a wall Waiting on the Savior Settle on a call Feels like a long drive On a dark night With no headlights To keep you on the road Ain't gonna get Fall in a stall car, stay where you are. Instead of carrying the load, don't give up. Is that still a thing to say? Kryptonite. Yeah, that shows, you know, we're going to, we, we, what I want to do is show, uh, I love to show a, a kind of a swath of who Gary, you are. And uh, those are two wonderful moments, uh, the a studio original, and then playing in that wonderful um, outdoor show. Um, but you know what? Um, let's take a walk back and see a little bit about where uh -oh. all this come from uh oh <laughs> and again and again you know for you know for everybody at home this is rated uh pg-13 yes it is uh, we might go into r but you never know um ah. here, here on there <laughs> here on the show um look born in winchester with gary which i love you grew up in middleburg um uh, i told you i was married there once and it was it's a wonderful town and uh it had to be a, a neat place to grow up i mean oh, it was awesome it was awesome. wasn't it it was. It was a great place. We lived back in a little section called they call Ridgeview. Yeah, I don't they call it that anymore. But wow. uh, all my friends, we all grew up back there, riding bikes. You know, cops and robbers played baseball. You know, all all the good stuff. All grew up together and. Wow. You know, I still keep in touch with some of those guys. So it's wonderful. Um, I, I love that. I remember going to out around there to a Robert Duvall. He lives yes. out there. And I somehow my favorite actors. <laughs> I, I somehow uh, got invited with the woman, my my ex-wife that I got that I was married at the Goodstone with. We got invited to a Robert Duvall party out at a massive tent. It was one of the most incredible experiences. He was there with his wife. They were dancing yep. tango. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, and I love Duval too, but Middleburg has so many kind of different things. That's neat. You grew up there. Um, you know, you started playing drums, uh, which was fabulous in the fifth grade. You continued, mm -hmm. continued through school with it. Right. Um, but then bass and guitar came in like, like yeah. 13 and 15. What drums you just got into because. Um, when we were in fifth grade, the, we were going, getting ready to go into middle school, Yeah. which they come to the elementary schools and, you know, sign you up for a band. Right. So they were like, what instrument would you like to play? And, you know, I'm like, how can I piss off my parents? Uh, drums. <laughs> did you get a pad first or drums? I got a pad. Yeah. I was I got, looking for that snare, man, but I got a pad. <laughs> you know, what's really interesting. I, I we're, the, we're about the same age, about two years older, give, give or take. It's right there. And I'm fifth grade. I got a drum pad. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, Right. Is that what all I'm going to do with a drum? And so I kind of gave it up. And then I started singing 37, you know, 38 years later, I became a lead singer in bands. But yeah. <laughs> you, you jumped into music that early, though, Gary. Yep. It seems like what was the influence of music for you at around that age of coming into that time when you were really starting to play a little bit more? What was the influence? Was it was it family? Was it friends, siblings? Well, I think there's more friends. I used to hang out with these two guys, um, <clears throat> Barry and Gary Rose, twins and they're gone now, but uh, oh. um, Barry and Gary, Barry and Gary, Barry, Gary and Gary. So, wow. 
we used to uh, sit around at his parents' house and listen to Bubblegum 45s and oh. Tommy James and, you know, everything, the soul stuff, everything. And it was just like, wow, this is really cool. You know, we should all learn how to play instruments, you know? So, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it seems like, it seems like the bands began uh, with, with your friends and, and in school and in your neighborhood. So was, was that kind of the, 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 the uh, what a lot of people do is that they begin those bands in basements and little parties yep. and garages. Was that, was that your world? Guilty as charged. Yes. No, that's, yeah. Well, it seemed to have gone somewhere wonderful as it did. Consider, considering throughout and, and also where we, where you are now. I love this. I, uh, you know, you're 16 and it's the Mistwater spring band. Yes. Now that almost sounds like it's a kind of a orchestral band <laughs> a wild. The, where did those guys come from that you knew them? Were they, out of your high school but older or these guys were um older and we used to do these things called field parties around the area before yes. they're outlawed um and they used to play all the local field parties and i just kind of looked at them you know like wow these guys are like they're gonna be huge because uh -huh. they were they were that good and uh, my uh my friend the drummer steve scott um always kept an eye on me, you know, cause he's like, Hey, you're, you're, you're pretty good there, buddy. You know? So I'm riding my 10 speed through, uh, through Ridgeview one day. Right. Uh, here comes this red and white van and it's Steve. And he stops and he goes, Hey man, he goes, I want to ask you a question. He goes, uh, Donnie has left the band and we need a guitar player. You want to come up and try out? And I'm like, just turned 16. Oh, wow. And I think I might have fallen off my bike at that point. Oh, just gone, me, <laughs> like, you? What? <laughs> really? <laughs> so I went up and tried out and I made it. So, <laughs> oh. and, and was that lead? Was that a, uh, was that a, that was a lead guitarist? Lead guitar position. Yep. Oh, yep. so 16 years old. And I'd only been playing guitar for about a year. And, and you join a band and early guitar. I joined a twenty-year-old band, and you know oh, they, that, they were twenty in their twenties. You know. But. Oh, that was, and I love the uh, in the notes that um, we've shared. It was like joining the Rolling Stones for me. Yeah, and, for me it was. <laughs> and it was, and and you said they would play mostly original stuff, so you were able to go right into an original exactly. type of band. That had to be a great thing to kind of jump right into. I mean, it cover, was a learning experience. I loved it. Yeah, co cover bands are still vital, and they yep. still do. Um, they 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 still do everything to your growth. Um, but I love the fact that you did that. And then they would, you know, get you back. Uh, which is what I mentioned in your intro, they would get you back home in time to go to school. I just remember, you know, having a weekend gig in Richmond. You know, we'd go down on a Friday night and play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, and you know, stop at the truck stop and get coffee and <laughs> start driving back up 95. And, you know, I'd get home at, you know, seven in the morning and walk in and say, Hey mom, going to go to school. Oh God. <laughs> go <to the> bus stop. <laughs> so, oh, that is, how long did that band, did you stay with those guys? I stayed with them until I was, I want to say it was a good three or four years. So about 20 or 19 or 20. Right. What was the next evolution of gary smallwood in music because there's a lot that's happened and a lot of uh, collaborations and of course we want, want to talk a little bit about some of those uh huge acts where you you were you know kind of shared stages with Ta mm -hmm. talk to me about what what went on after after mistwater after mistwater actually during mistwater i was playing with still playing with my friends barry and gary you know we do little gigs here and there i love that um and then i hooked up with a, another guy the, the band was based out of manassas so wow. there was another gentleman there paul burke i hooked up with and we started a band called higher stakes okay we did uh, some pretty you know hard rock and stuff you know and a uh, good band good act opened up for kicks before they were kicks um you wow. know before they went to new york to do their first album um so it was it was fun it was fun a lot of fun Right. And then it was a it seemed like it was a string of inclusions with with not only many different bands and different people. And we'll talk a, 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 about a few of them coming, but the genres mm -hmm. uh, you cross. Uh, yeah. is, th is that something you always wanted to be? Is this presence that can do a little of everything, which it seems um, like you, it didn't, you do. It didn't, it didn't start out that way. Right. <laughs> but I think. Uh, in my experience, it was good because I got to, you know, see if I could play that kind of stuff. Like right after Higher Stakes was a punk band, 
And it was just like, you know, just straight, you know, Joey Ramone kind of stuff. Was that Wacky Lee? That was Wacky Lee. And then um, after that, it was like, then I'd play with, um, I don't know who was after that. I can't you remember. got Rich Burgess band. Then you had the, your, that your... was all original stuff. That was kind of a, right. Almost a pink Floydish kind of. Ooh. Sound. Now, yeah. see, you're going like it's great. I know. <laughs> it's great to see that, though, because, you know, again, it's all you're just growing your your depth. And, and that's what's wonderful. I love um, Stilson Green. Oh, yeah. A staple of yeah, obviously yeah. Loudon and that whole world that you're so and we'll right. talk talk about a lot of the people out there that I, I know so well and, and love those guys. But Stilson, that was that an early uh, collaboration with Stilson? Um, the, again, there was another band who lost their guitar player and Stilson had called me and said, look, man, uh, we really want you to come play with us. And at the oh. time I was like, well, maybe, you know, and then I was like, yeah, I'll come do it. So that, nice. <laughs> it was great. I mean, we played, uh, played all over the place in the County and did the Bayou a couple of times. And that was radio uh, flash cab. That was radio flash cab. That is classic. I love that. Brian Fox um you played with still play um, with brian fox yes uh, i've known him since he was just a little guy and he's like so talented wow that's he, wonderful so that is just that's where the motown thing came in and the soul thing came in a little <laughs> touch of go-go here so, yeah yeah. Oh, yeah 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 that's that's spectacular alt country with genghis angus is right. that that is wonderful so again there's a cross section uh, you play you know, Darren Blessman's jumps into a band and I know, yeah. you know him quite well. He was actually obviously out at the uh, cancer can rock event that you, yep. you played at. And there he was. And with, you know, these, there was a brickyard road. Yes. A Skinner tribute band, which Skinner's I always Skinner tribute band out of Frederick, Maryland. Yes. Right, now are they, are they still going? They are still going strong. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. That's Look great. Them up. To know. They're really good. Good friends of mine. Very talented group. Well, as I told you a little uh, at the beginning, before we came on on the show, that I, I have High Noon coming on for September, and they are something amazing, too. And I was like, you guys better be good with all that I love about Southern Rock. Right. <laughs> and they they nailed, you know, 98.8% of it. I loved every second right. of it. Um, you had a, a lot of collaborations. And again, uh, it's just an incredible ride. Uh, there is a power trio that you've played with for a while. Uh, I love your... your your quote more pop than power uh oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's cal everett who i've known cal for so long first sang alongside him at the uh, one of the band house gigs um when they asked me to sing and i'm like you look around and it's eric scott and cal oh, everett no. and the Sid, <laughs> sidleys and john Ke and i'm like well i'm a midlife cover band guy but i can make it. you <laughs> you on the other hand you know have been do doing this since you were five but it was an amazing experience to see you and Cal and the, another amazing guy, uh, Todd Wright, who you right. you seem to have uh, uh, collab. When did you first collaborate with those guys? On on what way? I met Todd first um, when I was in actually before I was in Genghis Angus. Oh. Uh, I was giving their drummer guitar lessons because he wanted to write more material, and he wanted to do a demo tape so he goes i got this guy down in falls church i want you to come down to the studio and record with and it was todd oh man and 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 there's something you know again it uh, we, we could talk about this for another you know for two hours as well but is the, the the you know the the kind of the adherence the togetherness of the dc music community and it's yeah. you're you're just an, a wonderful example of how I, and I, I've seen it, you know, 150 guests close to on living on music the last two and a half years. And so many of you guys collaborate, you bond. It's I'm in this, you know, Andy Hamburger. I'm like, well, right. how, how, what are you in? <laughs> 43 bands now? Yes. You know, and but he's not a lot. Let me look at you. Look what you're doing. But I love that. And you must feel that there is a, a very special united feeling of this DC music community and also Loudoun County. It really is. And speaking of Andy, I just saw him the other night. I actually played in a band with Andy. Which one was it? Believe it or not, it was Schizophonic. It was Josh Burgess band. And... Oh, God, I'm sure it came up. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I, you did not wear earplugs. So, Andy, oh. thanks a bunch, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic. Yeah. I mean, that's what... To answer your question, um, it's been really cool because it, when you, like, figure you meet somebody, right. it kind of leads to... You know who they play with and yes. you get to play with those guys 
And then you get to know those guys right. and then they branch off and they branch off and they branch off. And I've been lucky enough to play with mostly all of them, which is great. Well, that's, that is what I, what I love because of a lot of the review of what you, um, you know, a lot of the video and, and, and other things you're, you're kind of playing in different, wonderfully different ways and in different places and really, really wonderfully. And I'm going to show this clip, which is one of my favorites. It is from what's behind me. Um, and it is this performance, I believe it's from the Tally Ho and it's 2019. So, Hey, there was no pandemic yet. Was it kind of just a regular, wonderful world at that moment? That was the last Jingle Jam show that we've had. Oh, that yeah. is that is what is amazing. Is that the and and the gym, talking about the Jingle Jam for a second, Gary? I mean, it's got a, a wonderful feel. It's got these amazing people that you see behind me, as well oh, yeah. as you. And it's got John and and Cal and so many other people. Tom Lofgren. It plays those occasionally. Who else plays the Jingle Jam band? Uh, right now, it's Todd runs it um stilson usually runs it also but i'm not sure he's gonna we're gonna do it in 2022 by the way great we're not sure if stilson we can we're talking talk him out of retirement or not but we're gonna try but it's uh john carroll cal everett mark williams um tobias smith who's out of new jersey comes down and plays with us uh kim pittager michael shepherd am i forgetting somebody um I know I'm forgetting somebody because we've had a few people here and there like Nate Brown from everything was our drummer for a couple of years. And oh, I just, I'm, that is, that sounds sensational. Well, what, yeah. what we, what we what I want to watch uh, first, if we may, is the, the, a song from Calgary, which is the three of you. It's you and Gary and I mean, it's you and, and Todd and, and Cal. Yep. And this, this is a wonderful, and, and how did the Beatles, you know kind of overview come to this band uh we all grew up uh, listening to the beatles i mean we all you can't go wrong with beatles no you i can't. grew up on it i mean when i was hanging out with my cousin that you know i was three years old and she was a little bit older and she had all the beatles records and so it's ingrained you know <laughs> it, it, it yeah it, it totally is in my head as well being from you know born in 61 and you just kind of came right into their rising right. in the way uh, but this is I just love the version you guys did of this. And I have it. I sometimes often run just clips of songs, but I just couldn't stop this song because of the way it <laughs> evolves towards the end. But here we go with Calgary. It's Cal Everett, Gary Smallwood and Todd Wright. Golden Slumbers.
Well, I don't know. It gives me chills to see, to see that song perform live by you guys. It is such a beautiful job. And that must, you know, there are there are so many amazing musicians, as we've said, around here that to collaborate with those guys to do the Beatles just has to be glory feeling for you. Oh, it sure is. I mean, and that wasn't bad for three guys. No. I mean, that's kind of a, you need like two or three other guitar players. You need a keyboard player. You need, you know, an orchestra. And you know, we were like, how can we um, do this and still make it sound like it's kind of full? So we, I think we did. Right. <laughs> right. Harmonies, I mean, the harmonies are just awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about uh, the uh, Jingle Jam shows. And these are something that are very special to this region <laughs> in yeah. Loudoun County. And uh, got a wonderful clip of a part where you're really featured in this. Um, I love the fact that you're, you know, lead vocals. And then what I've done, though, since we're showing a clip of it, is to, I went a little bit to the middle of it because I wanted to see that solo. Because uh, ah. we want we want to show a whole globe of Gary Smallwood. And <laughs> boy, do you kick ass. And I see I can say that that pushes it to PG-13. Right. Um, I wanted to show people that the, the talent you have on guitar and then talk a little bit about the guitar playing that you do uh, and how you've learned to be where you are in this. This is um largely gary todd john cal that's what's behind me right here uh 2019 the last show there mm -hmm. um at um the tally ho little merry christmas baby Yeah, you know, uh, those 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 shows I've heard are just a wonderful experience for both uh, on stage and in the crowd, aren't they? Oh, we love them. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. And we, we love, talk we love the crowd interaction because they're, you know, and they look forward it forward to it each year and as we do. Yeah. And it's just kind of become a, you know, a, a thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, a solid thing. I think everybody that I've had on the show right here, John and 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 Cal, have all talked about the Jingle Jam and, and have loved every minute of it. So it's it's a it's a wonderful wonderful thing. Um, talk to, we've been talking a lot about some of the live stuff you do you've done and are doing. Um, you've been in the studio uh, a, a number of times. What are the what is that experience like for you? And can you 
give us a couple of experiences which really stand out maybe uh studio is a different cat um sure is. <laughs> you know don't make a mistake because you're gonna hear it <laughs> nice um first one i went into was wally cleaver's recording studio in fredericksburg virginia with uh Wait. Peter Wall Bonneton. Wally Cleaver. Wally Cleavers. The Wally Cleavers. Now, that oh, is yeah. wild. <laughs> That's, he, he actually, Peter, who owned this place, actually asked Tony Dow if he could name it that. And really? Tony Dow sent him his blessing plus an autographed picture, which he hung up on the studio wall. Oh, <laughs> that is great. And all right, Russ, rest in peace, because we just, oh, yeah. lost, just lost him, and I know it. It ripped up um, oh, sure. Jerry Mathers and a lot of people. But that is wild. So you that was where it kind of kicked off. Was that with Wacky Lee? That was with Wacky Lee. Um, nice. And then the next one, I actually did my CD down there, which I recorded now, back in 98, I think. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. So that was that your that was that the last kind of solo CD you've done before yep. some of this before some of this original music now or was the original music before. going? Yeah, it was before. I right. was in my blues stage at that point. So it was Dude. like, you know. Nice. At Wally Cleavers, too. At Wally Cleavers, yes. Yeah. So you became, awesome. a, became a regular with, uh, Wally, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with uh, Leave it to Beaver. That is, that is really neat. Um, some other, Brett Michaels, um, yep. some, some other wonderful people that must have been kind of just an experience. Uh, it seemed like with Brett, there was at least three recording periods yep. you did with him. What, were uh -huh. the, what was that like? That was cool because that was at Pete Evick's studio oh, man. Uh, down in Manassas. Um, cool. I've never met Brett, but I've recorded on his stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, you're basically on the album. Or I'm with, right. with the so I sang on the first one, just I think just one track. The second one, I played acoustic guitar and bass, I think. Wow. A little bit of electric guitar. Wow. And there was a song off of there called... I'm not going to remember the title now. Right. But it was, it was with uh, Miley Cyrus. No, really? Well, I'm recorded with Miley Cyrus, man. <laughs> Who knew? Now, that's not in the notes. Right. <laughs> that's fantastic, though. She, uh, she's, she's some unique talent, for oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I think and, the song is Fall for me. I think it is. Oh, that's fun. But did, did another one after that with Pete. Um, right. One of the most memorable studio uh jobs i was in was with Genghis angus right we went out to bloomington indiana to record Ooh. uh their last album 12 days right and it was with mike wanchik who's um john mellencamp you know, right Arthur, yeah i saw that and i'm like wait a minute that's not wanchik i mean that's, <laughs> fan that's fa fantastic and then mark hood was engineering um he, wow. he'd worked with diana ross and all those people man i was like wow this is cool <laughs> so you know being in indiana you know, you take a break from recording. Right. And Mike wants to play basketball. Sure. So we go out back. He's got a full basketball court out back <laughs> at Echo Park Studios. Jesus. So we're out there playing horse, you know, and I'm like just frustrated because I can't get this one solo down. And he says, let's just go take a break and go play some horse. All right. So I go out and I shoot my first one, you know. Right. And that's the second one. So he goes, you know, boom, 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 boom. Horse is done. We're done. I'm like, all right, Mike, let's go back. I think I can do the solo now. Oh, <laughs> so it was like, just God. give me five minutes, you know, five minutes. And he beat my ass. On basketball. Right. It's like, G -g -g -g. <laughs> right. <laughs> Indiana boys. Oh, that is so <laughs> funny. Oh God. I had John Previty on the show who, uh, you know, who you probably know who he is, uh, the bass man from Denny Gatton and, yep. and things like that. And he said that Danny took him out, wanted to talk to him during a show and he, was kind of asleep on the stage next to him and talked to him almost did the same thing with the baskets. And then they went back <laughs> in and he was, it changed him, but yep. uh, you, you, you still had, well, you, you know, there's a, a plethora of, of studio stuff that you have done. And it must, again, must be wonderful to have that kind of part of your career as well as all the live stuff you're doing. Um, you, <laughs> it makes me cough. Uh, the, the people now talk a little bit about some of the experiences, uh, whether it's, again, is it opening? Is it playing with? Is it having a experience with in some way? Talk a little bit about things like, you know, your experience with Marshall Tucker and what, what, where, when was that? Marshall Tucker, I actually opened up for Marshall Tucker twice <clears throat> in two different bands. One, the first one was down at Jackson Springfield. Yes. Uh, remember that place? Oh, completely. That's yeah. where I saw Robin Trower. Yep. So 
which is a pretty amazing place to see people like like the like those guys. So I was with uh, the Jimmy Brown band. We did oh. uh, you know some southern original southern rock stuff, which was really he's a great writer. Oh, wonderful! Uh, so opened up for those guys. Great, great bunch of guys. You know, more, perfect. More friendly than you know most of them. So. Uh, absolutely. What year? And about what year was that? Generally, that would have been two thousand. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Doug was still singing with them, and yep. he's. He's for you know, uh, you know, forging ahead. Uh, it's it's getting you know, it's a long long run for him. And I, Paul Paul Riddle's going to be on in October with me. And boy, he loves to talk, and he's an amazing guy. And he talked a lot about Marshall Tucker. And I've been thinking of you and all these people who uh, who love that band. You also cro crossed Molly Hatchet, who I saw five times warm up the Outlaws in, in 1970, like nine, because I was an Outlaws fanatic. Yeah. Molly Hatchet, huh? was that an, again another opening gig or two? Another opening uh, gig uh, down at Jacks again with Jimmy Brown. Oh, that's that's really now back, fun. backing up to Paul Riddle. Um, yeah, the second time we opened up for him was at Tally Ho in Leesburg uh, just a few years ago, uh, and we were the opening band, the Smallwood Brothers band. And uh, wow, we walked in, and our drummer had his drums, bass player had all his stuff, and Paul was like, "Why don't you just play my drums, man?" I was like, are oh, wow. you kidding me, dude? And then the bass player says, yeah, you can use my bass rig too, man. We were like, dude, oh, that's, really? That's they, they were so nice. That so, is. So that was Paul's band? Paul's band? That or? was Paul, the Marshall Tucker band. That was the Marshall Tucker with Paul. That and Doug was a little under the weather that night. So, I mean, he was still so, you know, he's a sweetheart. Yes. Yeah, but he was just like, ah. It's gonna sound terrible tonight, fellas. I'm like, we're like, no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's I, I. I interviewed Doug about ten or twelve years ago, and you know, to have been in such a huge fan. I, I slept on the street in Hartford, Connecticut, for tickets, <laughs> and were kicked by the security guys to wake up. We slept all night. We went in and got ten front row seats at the Hartford Civic Center, and came out of the I came out of the place. And we heard Tommy Caldwell was almost killed in his in his accident, as you know. Right. And then he died in three weeks and we were crushed. And we went back and saw toy play for the first time without his brother. And he was crying and they were, they were incredible. I was such a big fan. So enough of that about me, but an amazing, amazing band. A bunch of people, Robin Trower, that had to be fun to, um, to, to oh, that was cross really paths cool. with that guy. That Jay Nedry who owned Jack's oh. who was the drummer for the road ducks calls me right. up and goes, do you want to open up for Robin Trower? Because he knew I loved him, right? And I was like, no, Jay, I, I, I don't. Well, I said, of course I do. No, thanks. <laughs> so he said, well, we're, he, he's coming this date. Um, come down and open up the show for him. I'm like, cool. So and we, uh, so I met him at Soundcheck. Nicest guy ever. Yeah. And uh, we played. And right. He, uh, he came on and, you know, did his thing. Great show. Dave Bronze was playing bass for him, who plays with Clapton and all those guys. Yes. Do you, all those guys do you remember what year that was, Gary? That would have been 2003, four. God, I'm, I'm telling you, because um, my ex, Mimi, who I was talking about a, minute, a second ago, was pregnant. And we went to see Robin Trower at Jack's. And I'm, I'm thinking, I wonder if you were in the opening band that I saw. But it would have been about 2001. Yeah, I don't so think it was that probably right. a bit later. Isn't that funny though? That's a that's an yeah. amazing place. It really had a really had a fixture in this in this region for a long time, and that had to be fun to cross paths with some of those amazing people. The list goes on. You did a, a, a guitar clinic with Elliot Easton. Yeah, uh, was that literally just sitting with him? You were playing bass, and he's playing, and you guys are just doing a clinic for. Was it Melody Music? It was. It was Melody Music um, in Sterling. Right. Uh, they also had the sh the uh, store in Leesburg. Well, I used to go in Leesburg all the time, talk to Rick and everybody there. Sure. And uh, Rick was like asking me, hey, do you know any bass players that might want to play with uh, Elliot Easton? We've got him for a guitar clinic and he wants to put a band together and, you know, play. And I'm like, well, I play bass. Um, <laughs> I, oh, me, me. So they, yeah. you know, he was like, oh, that's right. OK, yeah. Well, he'll, that's he'll be great. there. And, you know, we're picking him up at Dallas, uh, uh, and he'll tell you what to play. And well, there we go, Mr. Cotta, Mr. Cotta. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is that is fabulous to be able to get some experiences like that, especially with Elliot, because that band is, uh, is great guy. I mean, friendly. I haven't seen him since or talked yeah. to him. Anyway. Right. That is love that the is cars. Wild. Um, uh, Johnny Winter. Johnny Winter was awesome. We did um, we opened for him at Tally Ho again. Oh, with uh, Fast Eddie and the Fast Lane Blues Band, I think. Oh man, my friend Fast Eddie Galvin uh, 
he's like, come, come over with Johnny with me. I'm like, okay. So we did. Wow. So after the show, you know, they take him out to his uh, tour bus and the, one of the guys that was with him said, Hey, come on out and meet Johnny, man. I said, like, oh. really? <laughs> so I got a picture of me with, with Johnny sitting there, man. Nice guy. Oh, completely. And, and you know, he was three so, months before he freaking passed. Man. I know that that was a real tough one. And he was so, but he was such a, an influence to all of us in that really? era, era of, of how we grew up because of yep. the way that he and, and his brother and, and just people. Um, I love that Jenny Langer was on the show and they talked a lot about o- opening for Johnny. And then there was a picture of them on the bus with him yep. and she just lauded him. I love how that, there's those comparisons. Um, 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, you uh, ended up playing with two guys I, I interviewed who I adored. I also interviewed Paul Barrer from Little Feet, but uh, b- about three months before he passed. Right. Craig Fuller, who was <laughs> talk about growing up with music that we both grew up with, Pure Prairie Leagues, Amy, and all that stuff that they did. And then he joins Little Feet and they keep right. going. Um, I love that, that, his, that his son, Patrick, was there. And then Bill Payne. How did that come about at the Hooted Flute Festival in 2013? The Middleburg Humane Society put that on for a few years running. Uh, my really good friend, Hillary Bogley, who was in charge of that. Wow. Uh, she follows Little Feet, Government Mule, all those guys. They, they're, she goes everywhere. She goes to Jamaica with them. Right. Everywhere. So, and she knew that I played and, you know, it heard me a couple and she's hired me for a couple of her things. Sure. So she's like, I'm doing this um, Hooted Flute Festival. I'm like, what the hell is a hooted flute? Yeah, that's what I was got a humane society. <laughs> There's got to be something. Right. I mean, it's, it, was, it, was, to... it was something to do with an owl. It was owls, like saving owls. Oh my God. And they were raising money for doing that. I've heard of save the whales and yep. save, save the owls. Well, yes. you know, I love owls. My, I've got a collection of my mother, late mother's owls in my, in my bedroom that are all these little owls. Mm-hmm. Hooted flute. So she said, can you open the show for, um, it's going to be Craig and Bill Payne and Patrick. Oh. I'm like, I would absolutely love to. Ended up opening that show. Um, actually had to find a keyboard for Bill. So I called around a couple of friends and one of my friends had the keyboard that he wanted. So we oh got my that. God. So I had dinner with the guys and stuff and great, great guys. You know, I didn't bring up anything like I was a super fan i was like oh yeah well and i was like trying to be cool you know yeah bill man you're great right uh, you're like waiting for <laughs> right. waiting, waiting for columbus yes so my god they were like all right we're gonna play a couple more songs uh, gary come up and play with us right i'm like are you kidding me oh my gosh so they were up there going well, what do you want to play uh, i said you have to play amy and you have to play dixie, dixie chicken, chicken. <laughs> oh god so okay. we did those two and we did the weight by the band. Oh, for God's sake. So cool. So cool. How wonderful. That had to just make it make a wonderful kind of lo- uh-huh. you know, step on the ladder that you've a gone memory through. I'll never forget. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, the following year. Yeah. Please. We did the fluted hoot festival and uh, Bill couldn't make it. So Craig and Patrick came along and she got John Cleary. Wow. You know who John Cleary is. I know him. I know of him. Oh, my. From New Orleans plays with the, I think he's got a band and he played with Bonnie Raitt. And all yeah, that. I know the name. Awesome oh, guy. my God. So oh. I got to play with all those guys again, which is awesome. How have they, when was the last time they had the the, uh, the event? Was I it? think the, the following year was the last one. They had uh, the New Orleans Suspects. Wonderful. Just, just did the one band. Uh, right, and that, they didn't get to play that year, but they got, they got hit by COVID though. I'm sure not yeah. doing not doing them. Are they gonna Are they gonna come back with them? Do you know? I'm not sure. I hope so, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, you did. <laughs> I have to show people this because again, we're trying to show every side that we can of Gary Smallwood, <laughs> and I'm going to show a side here that I think the kids can gather around to watch this clip. This is from uh, 2011, <laughs> um, where you're at the Brunswick Crossing, Rock in the Valley. Yes. That, look at that. Brunswick Crossing Rock in the Valley Summer Concert Series. That is. Yeah. Where, where about, whereabouts is that, Gary? Brunswick, Maryland. Really? Oh, that's what I thought. Because that's right off of three. It was between 340 and yeah. what, what runs through there? 17 or so? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I don't, rem- I don't remember either. That is wonderful. This is uh, an incredible moment in the history of Gary Smallwood, where at this wonderful uh, summer concert series, he performs SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> a beginning uh, a song yeah. yeah so if i went 
Are you ready, kids? Aye, yeah. aye, Captain. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. Absorbent in yellow and porous is he. SpongeBob SquarePants. If not a cool nonsense, be something you wish. SpongeBob SquarePants. Then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. SpongeBob SquarePants. Ready? SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> you didn't think we knew that song, did you? Yeah. You know, that so, to me, that version of SpongeBob SquarePants should be uh, should be put into the cartoon. Uh, every time they have they play the cartoon, there's your version. Don't I you can't know. hear you. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. How did that did was that something that was uh that was you, that you planned on doing for kids in that audience of that of that concern? Or was it was I had been doing that for a little while only because my little Jonah was little at the time and he watched that every day <laughs> oh, so i just memorize yeah. the theme song and whenever i see a kid in the audience i go hey are you ready kids and oh. most, most of them are like what he knows that <laughs> yeah that's the feeling i got is that kids were just like wait a minute and they're right. like run, running up <laughs> well that's the you know that's the beauty of um of doing some of those gigs that we, uh, I, I have done a, a bunch as well, um, where we did one the other night, I mean, my, my Greek and the Freak partner, uh, my, my partner, Suzanne, we did one at the local pool that I've played a lot at. There's about a hundred people there for the gig, but a lot of kids yeah. and, you, and you just love it. And they, they, there's kids oh, who yeah. just can't get enough of the music. They started dancing at some, yeah. you, you know, that feeling. And you, you do so many of those uh, kind of things. Uh, I bet too, uh, as well as, um, you know, other kinds of, of gigs. Here's, Here's something that I, I, I wanted to almost wrap with. Um, being a Springsteen fan, um, I love the version you did of this. It's not easy um, to, to cover Springsteen like and get Springsteen fans to, to get all kind of you know teary because you did a beautiful job with this, Gary, and I love it. It was the Loudon Wildlife Conservancy's virtual oh, wine yeah. and art for wildlife. Now that was 2020. Was right. that a that was, was, that a, was that a virtual, virtual gig? Yeah. That Normally was. we we had played for them a couple of years, you know, live at their auctions and stuff like that. But that was the year that, you know, everything shut down and she still wanted to have it. So she reached out and said, Hey, can maybe you do the virtual thing? I said, absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. And uh, I've, it's funny. Um, I probably, if I continue to do the show for a long, a long time after this pandemic ends, if it ever ends, um, right. we, we can, uh, we can, you know, not have to do a lot of showing of virtual stuff, uh, but I don't mind doing it. Even if it isn't a pandemic, it's so right. wonderful it to, is. Wa it to is. watch you do this. This is, oh, thanks. this is again at the Loudon Wildlife Conservancy's virtual, uh, event that they did that Gary did in 2020. It shows that you kept going during that time where you're basically everybody shut down and, 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 and separated. This is a wonderful version of I'm afraid my favorite musician of all time. So I, I, I will say that. And so when people, I see covers of songs by Springsteen, I'm like, can I, you know, I ask you beforehand, but I, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to show it. This is uh, Gary Smallwood doing tougher than the rest. It's Saturday night You're all dressed up in blue I've been watching you a while Maybe you've been watching me too So somebody ran out Left someone's heart in a mess Well, if you're looking for love Honey, I'm tougher than the rest. Some girls, they want a handsome Dan Or some good-looking Joe On their arms, some girls want A sweet-talking Romeo Well, around here, baby I learned you get what you can get so if you 
You're rough enough for love Honey, I'm tougher than the rest Well, the road is dark It's a thin, thin line But I want you to know I'll walk it for you anytime Maybe your other boyfriends Couldn't pass the test So if you're looking for love Honey, I'm tougher than the rest Well, I'm wondering, uh, Gary, if he's going to play that on March 27th when I get to see him for, I think, my 37th time. Um, I am so excited. And you did a beautiful job. And I didn't have to pay $5,000 for the ticket. I was just going to say, did you pay five grand? No, <laughs> I didn't. And yeah, we, we could get we could get into that, too. That is I so know. funny. Um, you know, being a, I, and again, uh, I, 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 I'm open to the fact that it was a, it was joining Ticketmaster with them being, becoming the scalpers. Uh, yeah. and, that, and that was what I didn't expect because Bruce has been against high ticket prices for his life. And he's not like that. Uh, and I also adore him. So I'm, I'm biased. But no, I got tickets. They're up. They're up high, but they were a regular price or less even. Uh, but anyway, I've, I've only seen the guy once. Yeah, he's because my wife drug me down to what was then the Verizon Center. Oh, <laughs> God. You know, she is a Springsteen freak. Like I didn't enough. know that. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you've never seen Bruce. Oh, you've got to come down. You know, I've I had just seen Clapton there. I just seen Van Halen there. I just seen you know the stuff that I like. You know, and she's like, "You gotta go see Springsteen." I'm like, "All right, I'll go." Great show. I uh, know. That's the thing. A revival, Even, man. It was like a revival for three yeah. and a half hours. <laughs> well, it's funny. My partner, Suzanne's going to be going to her her first show ever uh, at, on March 27th, of first Springsteen show ever. And she loves kind of the blues, a little more of the hard rock sound, a lot of the alternative stuff of the 80s. And I'm like, no, just just wait. Right. It'll, be, it'll be about three hours. We'll your wait. Open. <laughs> I, sat, I sat in the third row in 1980 in front of Clarence uh, and I've sat close. We're, we're up, up high, but I just can't wait. But I love the version you did of that. And I'm you, you. Gary Smallwood, it, I, I, I've been able to see you play live at least. Uh, I, I, a lot of the people I've interviewed on this show, I'm still waiting. Patty Reese is playing the Cancer Can Rock event on September 24th. And then she has a gig right after. So she's leaving like you did the other Kinda like me, <laughs> but she, she plays, she's playing right after us. I have, I've interviewed her twice. I love her. I haven't been able to see her in person and it's absurd. I've been able to say hello to you, give you a hug and your family. I love seeing them too, but congratulations on harder going down and new, new music, because I know that means a lot to you, doesn't it? It does. It does. Um, you know, sessions been after me for years to do original stuff, you know, Right. I'm so busy doing the cover band stuff here and there. I'll do an original here and there, but to really right. get them down on tape and get them out there. Right. You know, that, that's kind of what we're shooting for now. So sure. We've yeah. got some stuff coming up uh, that right. we're going to release shortly. So, well, people can go find uh, what Gary Smallwood's doing. And I don't know, there might be a gig or two you could go see him at, uh, you know, yeah. or 30. Right. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I just looked at the gig list before I, uh, I came on with Gary and it is a wonderful ride. A lot of different kinds of gigs, a lot of different, wonderful, different places, a lot of breweries, a lot of wineries, which you guys who are like the Jason Massey's and the, uh, the Todd, you, you find that that's a wonderful environment to play in. I mean, they're really open, is. they're open for gigs, but it's also kind of neat, isn't it? I love it because, you know, years and years and years of bar playing, you know, starting at 10, ending at 2 a.m., you know, packing up till 3.30 a.m., getting right. home at 4.30 a.m., taking a shower because you're, you know, you smell like smoke and beer and, you know, and then sleeping yeah. till three in the afternoon. It's just like, I, I can't do that anymore. So breweries yeah. and wineries, man, daytime gigs. Right. Um, I can still do a nighttime gig. Um, spend time with the family, you know, and all that good stuff. Go on, go on vacation every now and then. You know? Right. Hey, it's been great. spend some time with the family. Hey, yeah, that's 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 what's interesting about a lot of these careers. And it, what's wonderful is that, um, you know, your wife, wife is so such a wonderful lady and such a wonderful part of 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 what you do. You guys co-write together, which I don't think I knew until yeah. I dove into your world. How long has that gone on since day one? Since pretty much day one. Uh, I met her back in, I want to say, oh, three. Um she uh this is a funny story now okay i'm ready exclusive story for you yes this is, this is how i met sesha 
all right so we're she calls me we're playing phone tag she wants guitar lessons so we play a phone tag for a few days and then finally get her on the phone so goes yeah this is sesha and i'm like sesha what is that your stage name what is that <laughs> beautiful <laughs> she says, no it's you know polish and blah 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 so right sure so I said, well, I don't give guitar lessons. I don't give guitar lessons anymore. But uh, here's some names that you can call. So you know, a couple of weeks go by, and she calls back, and she goes, well, none of those panned out. Um, you know, do you have any more names or suggestions? So I gave her a couple more names, and I was like, you know, we're we're getting ready to do a, a Smallwood Ellie Green and White reunion, right? Wilson Green, our band, yeah, at shenanigans uh this weekend why don't you come out and introduce yourself and uh say hi and all that good stuff and tell, tell me what you think right so she comes up and introduces herself and i'm like i'm giving you guitar lessons all right immediately <laughs> immediately if not sooner <laughs> well that's that's 2000 we've been together ever since so. <laughs> 2003 that was so that's yeah. nine, 19 years ago and you have a, a wonderful son and Yep. She, she's um, not only a beautiful lady, but a wonderful photographer and oh, a wonderful yeah, yeah. capturer of some of, obviously, it's so much of what you've done, right? And not only just uh, photographs, but video as well, right? Great eye, yes. She I'm is great eye. Yeah, you can tell when at the gigs too, when she's there to watch you play, she's always uh, at work too. And all I business, all and, business. And I, you know, I've always been fond of her since I met her at one of those one of those gigs. And now that I, she loves Springsteen, she's part of my family. So oh yes, that's <laughs> why it's got to be. Sasha, you know, right. you're in, you're that's in, right. you're into Jersey. All right, that's right. Uh, well, 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 that's where she was born, so she's from Philly. So oh, there we go. That's all right, true. that's great. Yeah, I'm a Connecticut guy, so relatively close. But oh, uh, yeah. but anyway, look, uh, it's uh, it's fabulous to have had you on i'm so uh really thankful to have you on living on music man well listen we appreciate what you do too you know you get the word out there and uh you know you're out there yourself doing the same thing so we appreciate you well that means the world to hear and it's been one of the great experiences of my life to not only talk to people that i knew which was a good amount of people but people that i got to know and i hope to stay close with you guys uh Oh, yeah you know even you know see you a little more in person it's just been a wild ride and we're kind of coming That's out <laughs> uh, here and there, but look, uh, best to you and Sasha and your son and your family. And also I will see you soon. I'm sure live. Oh yes, sir. Thanks Steve. Appreciate uh, it. All right, man. Take care.